Hey, this is Ralph. In this video, I want to demonstrate how you can style block elements with borders. So I've got a blank page set up, and let me jump over to the markup here. And I'm going to go ahead and throw in a couple of divs. Class equals B1. And let's see. Let's also go ahead and create div class equals B2. And let's go one more. Class equals B3. So now we've got three divs that we can experiment with. So that we can visualize these from right away, I'm going to throw a border on them. In fact, I'm going to delete that. We'll put in dot b1, comma, dot b2, comma, dot b3. And border, which is a shorthand property. Now when you use the border shorthand property, it's going to expect three, very, uh, three values. And I'm going to put in four pixels for the border width, and I'm going to put in solid for the border style, and then I'm going to put in the color. I'll do a dark shade of red. So border width, border style, and border color. And that's going to allow us to see these three blocks. Now they're all going to be kind of scrunched up very close together, so I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to also put in a margin of 50 pixels on all four sides, and that's going to apply to all three of these blocks. We should be able to see them pretty clearly now. And there they are. Now you'll notice that they're all scrunched up. It's working, but because there's no content within my blocks, the borders are scrunched up on themselves. So I'm also going to do this. I'll put in a min height of a 100 pixels, and now we can really see those borders being applied. So that's probably the fastest, the fastest and easiest way to apply borders. Just use the border property on a block element, and then you're going to put in the width, the style, and the color. Now, of course, color, there's 16.7 million different combinations you could put in there. For solid, there's a dozen or so combinations. I'm going to have a link to a W3Schools article where you can see several others, but solid is a pretty common one. There's also double, if you want to put a double border on some items. Outset, if you want to give kind of a three-dimensional look to it. There's also inset, by the way. Dotted is one I use from time to time, make a dotted border. And there's also dashed. Now you can get carried away with borders, and if you do a lot of borders on a lot of elements on your web page, things can start to look pretty cluttered. So I'm going to go back to solid, and that will change those out. Now if you want to kind of minimize the effect of that border. Let's look at just box number two. And I'm going to put a border of four pixels, solid, but I'm going to choose a light gray, CCC. Remember, I've got a white background. So by putting a border, which is a similar color, uh, monochromatic um, color compared to your background, you can give that impression of a border without actually being too obtrusive. Now you can do some other nice things too. Instead of putting a border on all four sides, I could do a border just on the top, and then similarly, I can do a border just on the bottom. Four picks, solid, light gray. And just as you would expect, that's gonna give me just a top and bottom border. Now I'm still getting my left and right borders from the previous rules, so I have a couple of options for that. I could take B2 out of my group selector up here, or, I could do border left of none and border right of none. I'm basically overriding that previous red border. And now we can see I just have the top border and the bottom border. And of course, those could be thinner and darker, whatever you need to do in order to create that effect that you're looking for. Now, for the most part, I've been using the border shorthand property, but you can be pretty specific. I'll go to dot B3, which is my third box, and I'll put in something like border color, and I'm going to put in four values here. I'll do red, green, blue, and orange. So when I have four values like this, it's going to be top, right, bottom, left. And now that bottom box has those four colors, top, right, bottom, left, red, green, blue, and orange. So you can really work with borders in several different ways. And last thing we'll do is we'll apply a little border radius. And I'll do something like um, 25 pixels. So imagine a little circle at the corners of this box. And now 
we're going to have rounded corners on all four corners of that particular box. Probably stand out a little bit more if these uh, borders were thicker. So I'll change that four up here for the border width to 15. And now much thicker on there, a little bit easier to see. So borders can be a pretty useful tool. And one more thing, we can also have a border without being able to see a border. So I could do something like instead of, I'll say instead of the, uh, the green, which is over there on the right side, what if it was the color transparent? So the border still exists, we just can't see it. Of course, I could have also colored that border white, the same color as my page background. So borders can be a useful way to help visualize content. You can also create artificial margins with borders in some circumstances, that's a pretty useful way to go. But definitely start playing around with borders, but don't go overboard. We don't want our content to look cluttered on the web page. Take care.